Doha, Qatar is a growing city rising next to Doha Bay in the Persian Gulf. The city is peaceful and tranquil for 51 weeks out of the year. But this week, the international motorsports media has converged on Doha for the finale of the 2012 Air National Guard H1 Unlimited Hydroplane season. 58-year-old Steve David is chasing his 14th championship and 6th national driving title. He will battle a strong field of competitors, and they all know the UIM World Championship is the big prize today. Everybody, Bill Weber along with Mike Allen and Steve Montgomery. Thanks for having us in for the race. It's been a battle with the bay to get these boats on the water. For that story, here's Steve. Well, Bill, the weather is obviously going to be a big story here at the Oryx Cup this weekend. The forecast for Friday and Saturday had winds of 40 to 50 miles per hour, and obviously that would be unraceable. Those are the days we planned to race the event. Thursday was supposed to be testing and qualifying. Officials decided to run some of the heats on Thursday when the forecast was better just to get them in. They did some testing and some qualifying before they ran the heats, and as you can see, Bill, it did have an effect on qualifying. Low speeds than we would usually see. As far as the schedule the rest of the weekend, it says there will be racing as weather permits. Thank you, Steve. Take a look at the points. After qualifying, Dave Vilwak was the top qualifier, so we cut 20 points off Steve David's lead to 632, 1,700 points up for grabs today. Now the qualifying heats. Five boats, three laps. The top six make the winner-take-all final. 1A, this was a deck-to-deck -deck battle between Jimmy Shane and the gold and red Graham trucking in lane one and defending series champion Dave Vilwak in the hometown-sponsored Spirit of Qatar. But Shane was ruled to have jumped the start. And after the heat, Vilwak, who came home first, was disqualified for a fuel violation. And that gave the win to the hard-working John Zimmerman driving for Mike and Lori Jones in the number nine Jones Racing Unlimited. After tech, no words needed to describe Dave's disappointment. On to heat 1B. Again, five boats, three laps. This was a battle between Brian Perkins in the Green 88 Snoqualmie Casino and Steve David in the multicolored Oh Boy Alberta Miss Madison. Perkins had the inside, but David has five national driving championships and three national team championships. They raced hard all three laps, but the start was under review to see if Perkins was too early. David won the heat. Perkins was pushed to fifth with the penalty. Eminently raceable, really, really good. So hopefully we can get several more heats in today before the, the storms kick up. Here's qualifying heat 2A. Again, five boats, three laps. The wind is now picking up. Brian Perkins in the 88 nailed a perfect start. But Dave Vilwak was the story, and it was a mystery. Vilwak got on the water late, got trapped outside, started fourth, clipped a buoy, and had to run a penalty lap. Perkins pulled away, kicked Brown, and the Miss Red Dot ran well, but once again was penalized for a fuel violation. Back to Vilwak. On the extra lap, he clipped a second buoy and damaged the front wing on the boat. Perkins got the win. He was happy. The spirit of Qatar team, not happy. We had to come out fast and we clipped a buoy and uh, it put us a lap down and again how do you describe officiating they were not happy with how the boats were put in the water he to be j michael kelly in the miss beacon plumbing with a good start but there was some horsepower on his stern steve david and jimmy shane and steve has the driving and team titles in sight david takes the win the points and is on the verge of the championship if they can win this next heat, we definitely have the national championship wrapped up. And then uh, if the race gets blown out, that'll be the, <coughs> the world championship. But at least we're in great position on the final. We know the capabilities of the boat. I know I can do it from lane three. But, of course, you never know what the Qatar boat can do. So we'll have to wait and see those boys. Take a look at the national high point standings after the first two rounds of qualifying heats. Steve David on the verge of the 2012 championship. Now it's a race on land to see if the Spirit of Guitar team and Dave Vilwak can earn enough points to make the final. But there's more trouble just ahead. Experience the extreme adrenaline action of H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Racing by winning the H1 Unlimited trip to Qatar sweepstakes. And don't miss your chance to win this exclusive trip for two to the 2014 UIM World Championship in Doha, Qatar. We pay for the airfare, hotel accommodations, and VIP ticketing to H1 Unlimited Race. Find us on Facebook for a chance to win a trip to the 2014 World Championship in Qatar. Complete contest details at h1unlimited.com. The 2012 Air National Guard Unlimited Hydroplane UIM World Championship from Doha, Qatar is brought to you by the Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area. By Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May, for professional management of your worldwide boat transport, 
and logistics, be sure to remember Peters and May. The state of Qatar is about the same size as the state of Connecticut. Doha is the capital. Average high temperature in January, about 71 degrees. Average high in July, about 117 degrees. And Dave Vilwak is running a little hot right now. He will not be able to answer the call for Heat 3A because the team is still working to repair the front wing and the steering cables. You can tell how frustrated Dave is. Here is the lineup for Heat 3A. Five boats running three laps in these qualifying heats. Top six boats will make the winner-take-all final. Again, Vilwak will watch from the shore. And something to watch on the water, Mike, the actual water conditions. You've got rough water and you've got a lot of wind. Yeah, a lot of wind is pretty tough, Bill. And like you were saying earlier, there's wind down one section of the race course, but it's to your back on the other side. So they will make a mental note and they know exactly which way they need to use the wing. You see the Peters and May countdown clock at 15 seconds. They will, they will have a headwind on the front stretch here and a tailwind down the back stretch. Looks like Steve David and the old boy Alberto Miss Madison will have lane one. And you can see we're not only racing against the clock, we're racing against the sunset. Countdown clock at zero, green flag in the air. All boats are legal. Something else to watch out for, Bill. As the wind comes through those buildings, it creates a pretty big draft effect on the hull. And it's very hard to read going that fast. It's not unlike Detroit, where the wind carves right through those tall buildings along the Detroit River. Exactly, exactly. These guys are going to be contending with uh, folks next to them, as well as windy conditions. You see Steve David in the old boy, Alberto Miss Madison out front. There's a huge heat for him. With a win, he will clinch the 2012 Driving Championship and the National High Points Team Championship as well. Being chased by Kip Brown, go on board there with... J. Michael Kelly in the Beacon Plumbing. He's battling ground for second place behind the race leader, that man, Steve David. And before these guys went out, Bill, they know exactly how many points they need to wrap this up. So he knows if he wins this heat, that's going to lock it up for him. And there's a good shot. Of course, all these boats running that saltwater scoop here in Doha. And the saltwater here is actually much denser or thicker than it is back in the States. It is, Bill. Hard to believe. But as we know, we don't want saltwater anywhere near these engines because there's going to be a pretty good indication that you're going to have a DNF. And we've had teams struggle with that this weekend. And it looks like uh, Mark Evans is going to be the latest victim. Slowing in the red 57 and heading back for the pits. Meanwhile, Steve David stretching it out on the back stretch with a good run here on Doha Bay, closing in on the championships. And you know there's going to be a lot of excitement in the pits when he gets back. No doubt. Steve's willing to do whatever it takes to put this thing out front and win this heat, even if he's got to put some headlights on. He wants this championship. And he wants not only the national driving and team championship, but he also wants to win this race, the UIM World Championship, and put that in the Oberto stable as well. Off to a good start. Victories in his two previous heats. And a good lead on Kip Brown. You know, you get this kind of a lead out front, and you start hearing all sorts of gremlins that you're just wondering are going to creep up on you or not. So Steve just wants to get to this checkered flag and put this to bed. Been a very busy day for these race teams and these drivers running three sets of qualifying heats. Race officials having to rework the schedule because of anticipated high winds later in the weekend. So they qualify today, they practice today, and they're running three sets of qualifying heats, but it hasn't had any effect on Steve David and the Oberto Bunch. If you notice the way Steve's driving this race course, he's got that front wing down, he's in the middle of the entire race course, so he doesn't put himself in jeopardy of hitting a buoy. This is exactly what he was looking for. So Steve David coming out of the final turn, charging toward the checkered flag. And Steve David will take the win in Heat 3A and clinch the 2012 National High Points Driving Championship and the Team Championship. What a day it's been for Steve David. Take a look at the points. 400 for Steve. That clinches the championship round second. J. Michael Kelly third. At age 58, just days shy of his 59th birthday, Steve David has his fourth national team championship and his sixth driving title. on the water getting ready for 3B in the pits a celebration for one of the most popular drivers in the history of the sport but for Steve David well it's not about him it's about the team this crew and uh, and the Alberto sponsorship it's been a dream come true since I joined him in 01 and 
This is win 17 for me in the fourth national championship for the team, and in my sixth driver's title, it just, uh, it, but it's the people. You know, they, these truly are a team. Um, and I think with this boat, you could pretty much put anybody in and it's going to run awfully strong. And so I'm blessed to have a tremendous group of people that support me and the good folks back in Madison, Indiana, and the, all the employees of the Alberto Company have stuck with us uh, through thick and thin. Yeah. And this was a challenging year, and we kept coming back from adversity. This is a, a can-do team that respects one another and uh, has a passion for what we do, and that just flows into the cockpit when I drive for them. And they appreciate their driver for the fourth year in a row. H1 Unlimited has traveled halfway around the world to Doha. And the man in charge of making this happen is with Steve Montgomery. Our host here in Doha for the fourth time, Sheikh Hassan bin Jabor Al Thani, president of the Qatar Marine Sports Federation, driver of this impressive boat that you see beside me in uh, the World Offshore Series. Sheikh Hassan, good to see you again. Your event continues to grow. Tell us what you've added to this one. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm really impressed uh, with um, you know with the competition that's been going on this year uh, with the H1 and especially coming back for the first time here in Qatar. Um, just to, to add more uh, spice, I guess, on on the event, we decided to had a marathon race for the jet skis for the local jet skis uh, initially it started um, for the local guys but uh, we've, we've received some registrations from Kuwait and uh, the Emirates so uh, I guess it, it is now giving you know getting a more international flavor to it so uh, again you know one more event that's uh, you know uh, we thought it's going to be a supporting event but again I guess you know the H1 had made you know the local um, marathon race to be one international event Again, a tremendous event. It's a big job for everybody to get here, but your job to get us here is even bigger. So thank you for everything you've done for H1 over the last four years and to plan to do in the future. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, uh, Sam and I are working um, very hard to get every, uh, the next five years uh, signed, uh, hopefully during the, uh, the February event. So um, we'll see you guys for the next five years. And we look forward to that. One more heat before the sun sets here on Doha Bay. It's heat 3B, and this is a battle of some of the young guns, including Jimmy Shane and Brian Perkins. John Zimmerman, Tommy Thompson, and Ryan Mallow also in this field. Well, the tough part here, Bill, as you can see, the water is about the same color as the sky. So it's going to make it very, very difficult to read the water at 200 miles an hour. It's very late in the day, and the cameras actually make it look much lighter than it really is. It's also getting cool now here. That's by Doha standards. There's Jimmy Shane in the Grand Trucking. He's in lane two, battling side by side with Brian Perkins. And this went on for all three laps. But Shane was able to hold off Perkins, taking the checkered flag, the win, and the 400 points as his impressive season continues in the H1 Air National Guard Series. There you see the order of finish. Shane Perkins, Zimmerman, then Tommy Thompson. Ryan Mallow did not finish. And here are the points after the three qualifying heats. Steve David continues to lead the pack with a perfect day. Jimmy Shane chasing his second career victory in his first full season in the series. So as the sun sets, there's a new series champion, Steve David. But tomorrow, a new day dawns with the UIM World Championship trophy waiting to shine. Experience the extreme adrenaline action of H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Racing by winning the H1 Unlimited trip to Qatar sweepstakes. And don't miss your chance to win this exclusive trip for two to the 2014 UIM World Championship in Doha, Qatar. We pay for the airfare, hotel accommodations, and VIP ticketing to H1 Unlimited Race. Find us on Facebook for a chance to win a trip to the 2014 World Championship in Qatar. Complete contest details at h1unlimited.com. The towering city of Doha, Qatar, glistens in the morning sunshine as fans from around the world are set to watch the stars of the Air National Guard H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Series battle for the World Championship. But before the action on the water, there's plenty of action in the pits, including the driver autograph session, which is extremely popular at each H1 Unlimited Hydroplane event. All the drivers are there. The fans line up early for this one. They want to make sure they get their favorite driver's autograph on a photo card, program, or maybe even on a picture they took earlier in the weekend. Who is that guy in the middle? Then it's back to work and time for Heat 4A. And there you see Steve David trying to go four for four here in the preliminary qualifying heats in Doha. And take a look at the lineup for 4A. Steve David, Kip Brown, J. Michael Kelly, Mark Evans and Brian Perkins. Five boats, three laps. Looks like much better water conditions today, Bill. Three, two, one, mark. You can hear the countdown to the score up, Luis. Steve Montgomery doing all kinds of work here, handling the PA. And it looks like J. Michael Kelly's gonna have lane one. 
Everybody seems to be satisfied with their lanes. They're more concentrated right now on making sure they hit their start at full throttle. But J. Michael really likes that inside lane in that boat. He loves the inside lane in that boat. That boat turns very well. It's a little bit shy on top end speed, but they are somebody to contend with because he's driving the shortest distance around the entire racetrack. You see the Peterson May countdown clock. Steve David already has three first place finishes. He's won the team in the driving championship. He's a lock for the final. How hard does he drive here? Right here, he wants to stay clean. Just not get into anyone else's business. Make sure he puts this thing in a final so he can go try and win that as well. Ah, well, you saw Kip Brown come screaming up there in lane three. Brian Perkins in lane four. There's Mark Evans on the outside in lane five. Mark Evans, probably one of the best starters we have in the entire sport. Unfortunately, when he gets down to the end of the straightaway, he's usually in lane six or seven, and that's really hard to make up for. The start is clean. All boats are legal. There's Kip Brown in lane three, really bouncing that boat down the front stretch. Now into turn one. Steve David in lane two. J. Michael Kelly has the inside lane, and here comes Steve David on board with our GoPro camera. Here's what we were talking about. J. Michael Kelly made a heck of a start. He's got the inside lane, but here comes that horsepower on the outside with the Alberto team. You know, we want to congratulate Steve on the championships, but you also want to congratulate his crew chief, Mike Hansen, Charlie Grooms, Art Larry Alberto, and I'm sure there's a big celebration right now at the Boneyard Grill in Madison, Indiana, because they have the 2012 Driver and Team Championships. Back on board with J. Michael Kelly. On that inside lane, you see the city of Doha to the right. That's the man he's trying to catch, Steve David. Three preliminary wins already, going for his fourth, and working hard at it, and that water is really getting churned up with all these boats out there. It is going to get rough, Bill. You know, the other thing you got to consider here is this is such a big body of water that you can get a roller that from a boat that passed 10 minutes ago that you won't ever see until it comes up on you. And these are huge boats, that ships, they're basically, that are out in the Persian Gulf sending those rollers in. Right, and, and again, at these speeds, when you get to them, there's not a whole lot you can do. Just brace yourself and hope you get through it. And we talked about Mike Hansen being the crew chief for this boat, but he's really more like a co-driver because he was such a successful driver. What's he telling his driver right now? Really, these two guys have a great, great rapport, and there's nothing like driving for a crew chief that used to be a driver. So he knows exactly what Steve wants. He has a very good relationship with him on the radio, just like you said. So these two go back and forth, basically keeping Steve calm, telling him where the other boats are, and letting him know, look, we got this thing wrapped up. We just want to get in the final. And that's really where Mike's experience plays into this. It does. Mike is very calm. Uh, he's very low-key, and uh, it's nice to hear a solid voice like that on the radio because as a driver, you tend to get a little worked up. It's almost like sometimes his pants doesn't have a heartbeat. He's so calm and so relaxed. He is. He is. But you want that. You want that on the radio. You don't want somebody that's as, as hyped up as you are. And with his 16 career victories, two wins Steve David has never been able to capture. The one here, the Oryx Cup, and of course, he's never won the Gold Cup. And you know, for Steve David, he really wants that, that Gold Cup. That's kind of like the Dale Earnhardt trying to win the Daytona 500 for so many years, and he finally did it. So, yeah, Senior finally got it in his 20th Daytona 500. Steve David working his way through the final turn, the final lap of his final qualifying heat. And he's going to be a perfect four for four coming down on Doha Bay to take the checkered flag and another 400 points. The 1988 Rookie of the Year, Steve David. Heading into the final is the 2012 National High Points Driving Championship and with the team championship. Kip Brown gets a second, Brian Perkins third, Mark Evans fourth, and J. Michael Kelly fifth. Now time for the Alberto gang to prep for the final as we get ready for Heat 4B. And as the teams work in the pits, there are plenty of fans attending the race here in Doha, and many of them are members of the U.S. military. And some of our military friends changed uniforms this week, working as an honorary crew member with the various teams and even the officials. So here is a chance to meet some of our real American heroes in this week's Air National Guard Spotlight. Hello, I'm Sergeant Edward Moore, United States Army out here at the races in Doha. I'd like to say hello to my wife, Stephanie, and my son, Christopher, in Houston, Texas. I miss you guys, and I'll be seeing you soon. Chuck Harper from Germany. I'd like to say hello to my wife, Marianne, my daughter, Serafina. I love you both, and be home in uh, April, good Lord willing. Y'all take care. Love you both. I'm Sergeant Dodds of the United States Army. Uh, I'd like to say hello to my family, friends watching back at home. Hi to my wife and kids. Love you. Love you guys, and we'll be seeing you soon. This is Staff Sergeant Kyle Koffel. A quick shout out to Patasco, Ohio from Doha, Qatar. Uh, hi, my name is Tim Ballard. I, uh, I'm with the 850th MP Battalion, US United States Army National Guard. 
Uh, I just want to do a shout out to my wife and kids back at home. I really miss you guys, and you're doing a great job. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Specialist Daniel Wollstenholm here at Doha Qatar at the H1 Unlimited Boat Races. I just wanted to say hi to my wife and my son, Heidi and Grayson. I love you guys, and I'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Sergeant First Class Jeff Thornton. I'm here in Doha, Qatar, working with H1 Unlimited. I'd like to say hi to my family in Casa Grande, Arizona, to my wife, Michelle, and all my children. Hi, I love you guys. Boats heading out for 4B as Steve David turns his attention to the World Championship Final. I'm absolutely ready. We've had a fantastic weekend here in Doha. We won all four heats, and now if I can just pull off this final, we will have won the national championship and the the world championship, so this will be a tremendous weekend for Madison, Indiana, and the Oboe Alberto. And for Dave Philwock, one last chance to salvage a disappointing weekend, but he'll need a miracle to make the final. Hockey on Friday night ice. The ice heats up and it's go time. In shoot scores! Oh baby, what a shot! Race. The speed and the hits. Oh my goodness! Tick, tack, toe! It's WHL. Are you kidding me? Shot score! Fires rebound! Oh baby, what a save! The shot score! Hockey on Friday night ice. Only on Root Sports. Qatar for the UIM World Championship or X Cup for the Air National Guard. H1 Unlimited Hydroplanes. One last qualifying heat. One last chance to get the points needed to make the final. And in this heat, all eyes are going to be on Dave Dilwatt because he really needs the win and the 400 points and some help. Actually, he needs other guys to have some bad luck. Yeah, you know, Dave's going to run as hard as he can and just, you know, hope the chips fall in his direction later on down the road. But it's going to be tough for him to get in the final. You saw the lineup. John Zimmerman already has a heat win earlier this weekend. And Bill Wax got a good lane. Looks like he's got himself in lane one as they troll down the backstretch. Jimmy Shane in the Graham Trucking has lane two. John Zimmerman in the Jones Racing in lane three. That's Tommy Thompson. And the Miss Peters in May, he's in lane four. And Ryan Mallow in the U100 on the outside. You see the Peters and May countdown clock. Down to 20 seconds as they swing through turn two and approach the front stretch. All eyes on Bill Walk in lane one, really watching to see how hard Dave goes here and how the other guys race. You know, you would think Dave's going to go like a madman and treat this like a final just so he can get into the final. And then to the contrary, you got people like Jimmy Shane that are going to do everything they can to protect their boat because they think they can win the final. They know they're in the final. Green flag in the air. All boats are legal. Ryan Mallow had the lead at the line, but he's going to lose that as they charge into one. Phil Walk on the inside really hugs the buoy line. Jimmy Shane in lane two. Then it's Zimmerman and Tommy Thompson on board the GoPro camera with Dave Dilwak. Remember, a lot of wind and the water really starting to get rough here in Doha. As we get later in the day. There's Bill Walk whoa, dancing down the back stretch. Yeah, those are those unseen rollers that you will not go. Oh, look at this. A rough ride for Bill Walk, and he is slowing on the course. Well, we got engine damage here. There's fire at the rear of that boat. Don't know what took place there, Bill, but as you can see, that engine looks like it broke loose from within inside the stringers, and that probably led to that whole engine failing. Now, it looks like Jimmy Shane is the race leader, as you see Bill Walk dead in the water, but Shane has been penalized for a lane violation coming to the score-up buoy, so John Zimmerman in the nine, the Jones Racing Machine, is your race leader. So that's Shane, your GoPro onboard camera for the Graham Trucking. He's been penalized one lap for a lane infraction, and John Zimmerman in the white number nine is your race leader. Meanwhile, a lot of focus still on Dave Bill Walk. Smoke pouring from the back of his boat now. Still, the race continues. We could see a red flag, depending on the conditions aboard the Spirit of Guitar. But meanwhile, Jimmy Shane is out front. He is not the leader, and he has been penalized a lap for a lane infraction. John Zimmerman is your race leader. They come through turn two. That's where the Spirit of Guitar is, and now it looks like, yes, the red flag is in the air. The flare has been fired. Drivers are asked to slow immediately, and now
now the safety and rescue crew will head to Dave Vilwak in the spirit of Qatar. So this race will have to be restarted. Mike, take us through this. Yeah, Dave was incredibly lucky here, Bill. As you can see, these are the rollers we were talking about. There's absolutely nothing you can do when you get there. You put the front wing down, you hope she comes back down, but you're just along for the ride. And unfortunately, as you can see, tremendous amount of engine damage. They had to break pretty much everything that was holding an engine in place. There you see the red flag. Drivers have headed back to the pits. And Vilwak still on board that Spirit of Qatari. He's going to try and get the cowling off of there. Yeah, this isn't good. This isn't good at all. When you see that black smoke, you know you're well into the fiberglass on the boat. So a rough ride and a rough weekend for Dave Vilwak. His race weekend is over. His boat damaged. His team disappointed. Bill Weber, Mike Allen, Steve Montgomery back in Doha where the spirit of Qatar is being lifted onto the trailer in the pits. It has not been the best trip for Dave Vilwak. Earlier in the weekend, he damaged the front wing and steering cables and now an engine fire as an out of the race after a rough ride in 4B. I uh, just hit a big ground swell out there and got up in the air and the motor exploded. They were telling me to get out of the boat and get on a rescue boat, but I've been, I've been to those movies before. <laughs> so you know if you don't get the cowl off, because other people don't know how to get the cowl off, yeah. that many times the fire gets much more ferocious inside the boat. So I quickly pulled the pins out, threw them in, and dumped the cowl off, and then the guy did a great job of hitting it with water immediately. And a tip of the hat to the safety and rescue teams that work so hard at every H1 event. Now the crew will assess the damage, and Dave Vilwak's reign as series champion will end watching the World Championship race from the pits with his crew. A bad day in Qatar for the Qatar team. Uh, motor, uh, Dave took a big hop, flying hop, and uh, the engine bolt sheared that attached to the diffuser. A both sides sheared, and then the engine dropped broke a line or cracked the line or something we're not sure what happened but then but then a fire started and pretty much melted the whole back of the boat and brand new engine first time in the boat we flew it here just got here two weeks ago and this is shot now too so it's a bad day today and these boats look so graceful on the water mike but that gives you an indication of how hard the walk hit yeah he hit really hard i mean you're talking about 200 miles an hour and about a 7,000 pound boat it's going to take a beating so this will be a three-boat heat. John Zimmerman in the Jones Racing, Tommy Thompson in the Peters and May, and Jimmy Shane in the Graham Trucking. And it looks like Zimmerman's gonna take that inside lane on board with Jimmy Shane and our GoPro camera. You see the Peters and May countdown clock counting down to 30 seconds. So not a lot of boats out there. Water won't be as rough. And these guys all want as many points as they can get. Yeah, everybody wants to get into the final. It's pretty nice being out there with just a few boats. You really don't have a whole lot of people to worry about. And it just makes for a little bit more of a comforting start. And this has been a good weekend and a good way to end the season for the Jones Bunch because Zimmerman's done a great job. They've had a fantastic year. I mean, those guys just kept getting stronger and stronger every race this season. And here they are. They're probably going to be in the final. And I'll bet they'll be in contention for the win. Down clock is at zero, green flag is in the air, and John Zimmerman across the line with a good start. Jimmy Shane got a rooster tail behind. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but that was a pretty good jump by Zimmerman if he was legal. Start is good, all boats are legal, but remember, Jimmy Shane was penalized in the original start for 4B for a lane infraction coming to the score up buoy. That penalty carries over to this restart. So while he's running side by side with John Zimmerman, Jimmy Shane in the number five Graham Trucking, that golden red boat, will have to run an extra lap. So right now, no reason in the world for Zimmerman to push it, and really no reason for Jimmy Shane to push it. No, now that you say that, Bill, I think Jimmy was a little bit off at the start because he didn't want another penalty. <laughs> So here comes the horsepower now. You can see Jimmy picking up the pace, flying it pretty good, using that wing to get it up and float it through that corner. Now, now you're starting to see some horsepower. There he goes now. Nice boat ride. That's one good thing these guys know is there's not six boats on a race course. The water's going to be a, a lot better than when there is. So forget that part I said about not racing real hard. No, he's back to racing hard again. He's uh, he's looking to put this win here, make sure he gets the, gets the points needed to get into the final. That's on board with John Zimmerman. How good do you think Jeff and Mike Campbell feel about this season working on that boat? They got to feel good because, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit uh, underfunded, if you will. And they have been sticking their nose up in there with all these guys that do have a lot of dollars behind their team. Jimmy Shane in the Graham trucking. He is out front, but will have to run that one extra lap. Penalized for a lane infraction in the original start of Heat 4B. 
So Shane's out front, but it's John Zimmerman who's looking to get 400 points for the Jones Racing team in that number nine boat on board with him. Notice the lane that Jimmy's running in here. He knows he's got somebody on the inside, and he's given him plenty, plenty of room. No more infractions needed. Tommy Thompson and the Miss Peters in May. And Tommy has been impressive since coming in for J.W. Myers, who was injured earlier in the season. He has been, Bill, and you got to keep in mind, he came in mid-season and strapped into an unlimited hydroplane for the first time ever. So there's a lot to get used to compared to the classes that Tommy's been running in the past. As we look at Zimmerman running about a rooster tail behind Jimmy Shane, Zimmerman is your race leader. But when you look back to this race a year ago, Mike, you have Jimmy Shane this year, basically his first full year in the sport. He's a good pick to win the UIM championship this year. One year ago, Scott Lidico, a rookie, won the UIM championship. A couple of East Coast guys, some young guys, really coming up strong in this series. Yeah, it's, um, you know, we're starting to see the replacement field come through for the Bill Walks and the Steve Davids of the world. And this is it. This is what we're looking at. And you say East Coast, you're right. There's not many people that have made it in the Unlimited from the East Coast. We've got a few in there now. There's John Zimmerman, your race leader and your race winner. 400 points for John Zimmerman in the U9, Jones racing for Mike and Lori Jones. So Zimmerman celebrates a win, celebrated his 48th birthday on January 21st, and really one of the nicest guys around. John's always smiling. In fact, so is this guy, Steve David, with some autographed souvenirs. But the big question now is who will be smiling when the checkered flag flies for the next Unlimited World Championship? The teams are ready, the fans are ready, and the hardware, well, it's just waiting. The green flag is coming up next from Doha, Qatar. On this tricky course on Doha Bay. Here's this week's crew chief, Confidential. Trying to set up for the winds we have here in Doha. There's not a lot we can really do. This is an unusual event for us in the fact that we're racing in this bay and the wind is coming behind us through the buildings of downtown Doha. We're looking at 40-story buildings that are acting as a wind dam that keeps the wind from hitting the water in certain areas, but yet, if you look out on the race course, all of a sudden you'll see black water, we call it, and that's where the wind is actually hitting the surface of the water. Well, when it does that, and an unlimited hydroplane goes over it, it creates more lift and lifts the boat out of the water. And basically, the only tool the driver really has to control the race boat at any time is the front canard. We can move this thing up, create down pressure on the front end of the boat to keep it pinned down, or he can drop the trailing edge down, create lift. And that's generally the only tool he really has. The rear wing is in a fixed position from the time it leaves the dock. He cannot move that. But this he can move with this. You got two left foot pedals, basically. The right's just like any other vehicle. It's the throttle. But the left foot pedal, he'll have two. One on the outside, one right in the middle of the three pedals. He steps on the outside when bring the trailing edge up to keep the boat down on the water. And generally, as he comes out of the turn, he'll drop the trailing edge down to try to get the boat floating and free of the water as quickly as we can because that's what makes the boat go the fastest. Now the front straightaway, he'll hit pockets of wind in places that's not going to have no wind, so when he doesn't hit the wind, the boat's going to come back down on the water. When he hits the dark water, it's going to fly. Now the back straightaway is just going to plain be rough because it's further away from the big buildings. It's unprotected. We're probably going to see some big swells and some white, white caps out there, which at that point, he's going to need to try to fly the boat, get it over the top because you don't want to plow through it because you end up banging up the boat and tearing the boat up and maybe end up with a did, did not finish. And then as he enters the turns here in turns three and four, he'll be turning squarely into the wind as it looks like it's coming from the Persian Gulf and he'll see an extremely amount, a lot of lift. So he'll have to get on the canard to try to keep the boat pinned down to the water. So it's really driver's, driver's the only control we have over this and the guy who masters it the best is gonna win in these conditions. And his driver, Steve David, heading to the Oh Boy Alberto Miss Madison getting ready for the final here in Doha. Peterson May also getting ready, and Steve Montgomery is down in the pits with the one man involved in getting all the equipment from the stakes here to Doha. Steve? Four years ago, when we first talked about moving the entire Unlimited Hydroplane Series halfway around the world for this event, it obviously presented some logistical problems. The answer came from this man, David Hawley, president of Peters and May. Global Logistics. David, no problem. you become an expert at moving this sport around, haven't you? Yeah, I was just talking to Larry Alberto, actually. I said, coming here now is like going to another race we do in the States. 
it's so organized okay the shipping's still the same it's a bit complex but it gets here on time and it works but once it's here the guys at QMSF have organized the whole race so well it's like being in uh, you know any other race in the US and somewhere along somewhere along the line you got your name on a boat as well yeah the boat the, 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 the boat's great isn't it you know mm -hmm. everybody wants a name on a boat you know the company for us choosing that team was a no-brainer they're great people good for our company good for the sport you know so thanks again for another great job and hopefully we'll keep meeting like this for years to come huh? it'd be great wouldn't it yeah thanks very much mike let's look ahead to the final no dave billwalk so you've got steve david the veteran against jimmy shane in his first full season in the boat yeah that's going to be a close race between the two of them i think it's going to come down to lane choice you want lane one but we've seen steve can win from lane two he can and then we got those conditions win Rough water in six boats with five laps. Steve David has never won the world championship, but neither has Jimmy Shane, one of the might, next from Doha. The 2012 Air National Guard Unlimited Hydroplane UIM World Championship from Doha, Qatar is brought to you by the Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area. By Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May, for professional management of your worldwide boat transport and logistics. Be sure to remember Peters and May. We are ready for the season finale for the Air National Guard Unlimited Hydroplane Series, the UIM World Championship here in Doha, Qatar. And fans are everywhere, making certain they have a good view of this two-mile course on Doha Bay. Here is the starting lineup. It is a six-boat field with five on the front row and a trailer. The final is five laps. You cannot pass the score-up buoy before the one-minute mark, and you most certainly cannot cross the starting line before the Peters and May countdown clock reaches zero. And Mike, we're a little over 90 seconds away from the green flag, about 30 seconds before the boats can pass the score-up buoy at the exit of turn one, and you have to be careful with all the salt water in the air during this milling period. This is the most critical point right here. You don't want to get anywhere near someone else's wash to have that salt water spray into the cowling and get into that engine. Now you see J. Michael Kelly, he's in that boat in front of the field. He's supposed to be the trailer. He's being told by officials to move out of the way. Now they're coming to the score-up buoy. Tommy Thompson and Miss Peterson May is well behind the field. J. Michael Kelly, who's supposed to be the trailer, is right on the front row, and now he cuts to the infield. In fact, J. Michael Kelly is being told to park the boat in the infield for failing to obey the referee's instructions. So he is out of this final. So it'll be a five-boat final, five boats all on the front row. You see our GoPro onboard cameras. That's Brian Perkins. You can tell Jimmy Shane wanted that inside lane really bad. It didn't matter if uh, J. Michael was supposed to be there or not. He leapfrogged him. <laughs> and he would have known that J. Michael Kelly was supposed to be the trailer. Yeah, they know before they go out exactly where that boat's going to be. And Jimmy probably just didn't understand it and didn't care. So Jimmy Shane has the inside. Steve David will be in lane two. On board the Graham trucking with Jimmy Shane. Peters and May countdown clock inside of 12 seconds now. The boat's easing their way out of turn two. Down the front stretch, coming to the green flag. The final for the UIM World Championship is underway. Green flag in the air. This is critical right here, Bill. These guys are gonna fly these things as fast as they can to get down to that first turn and get out of that first corner first. Legal start, all boats are legal. Jimmy Shane on the inside. Steve David is going to hug Jimmy Shane's rooster tail and just keep that water just to his left to make sure he's as close as he can to try and make a move. On board with Jimmy Shane, that's intimidating. It is. Knowing that Steve David is the guy that's chasing you. No doubt. They know they're fast. They know what they're capable of doing. Jimmy is going to fly this thing for all it's worth. As you can see it right here, going down the back straightaway. He's got the wing. Looks like it was in a full-up position. And that means, that means he is flying it. Jimmy Shane down the front stretch being chased by Steve David, looking into that bright sun as you look back from Shane towards Steve David. Yeah, we talk about rough water conditions, but then you've got that blind spot from the sun as well. Once you come around that corner, you're just hoping that water's in good shape until you can get down that straightaway. You see on the far outside, they're lapping the slow boat of Tommy Thompson. He is well off the pace in this five-boat final. Meanwhile, Jimmy Shane really starting to stretch it out. That's J. Michael Kelly heading back to the pits. A 
after being instructed to do so by the officials for not obeying the referee's instructions. Meanwhile, 27-year-old Jimmy Shane in the Grand Trucking out front here in Doha, chasing his first world championship in his first full season driving an unlimited hydroplane. There's the veteran, 58-year-old Steve David, in second, and the old boy Alberto Miss Madison really working hard trying to rope in Shane. Yeah, Steve's going to fly that thing to do whatever he can to pull up on these guys, but it looks like they're just a little bit shy on speed. And again, you have to go back to the water conditions. We saw what happened to Vilwak, so if something should happen to slow down the five, then Steve David wants to be right there when it does. That's correct. And you're right. These water conditions, one team may be set up a little bit better than the other, and the water may be completely different from the qualifying. And I really liked how Mike Hansen talked about how you try and set up. You do as much as you can for your driver, but there's really not a lot you can do racing on Doha Bay. Now, these conditions are different than anywhere else that we race, and uh, it takes uh, a driver and a crew chief a uh, good combination to figure this out. Boy, really dancing that boat through turn two. Looks like Steve David might be closing the gap just a little. David has already clinched the 2012 Driving Championship and the Team Championship, but he wants the Orex Cup. He's never won the World Championship. He's never won the Gold Cup. Those are two blank spots on a very impressive Hall of Champions resume. It is a two-boat race right now. Jimmy Shane in front, Steve David chasing. Down the backstretch, coming to the halfway mark of the final. On board with Steve David, there's Brian Perkins in the 88 Snoqualmie Casino machine. He runs in fourth. John Zimmerman in the Jones Racing number nine is in third. Jimmy Shane got that spectacular win in Tri-Cities earlier this season. His first career win in an unlimited. Now he's looking for his second, and it could come here in the World Championship. We talked about crew chiefs. Jimmy Shane. He has a very solid crew chief on the other side here. Tom Anderson, just as calm and laid back as we were talking about Mike Hansen. That's what you want to hear. You want something that's solid, it's firm, and you don't want to get worked up in a cockpit because someone's screaming in your ear. Most of the time, Tom is another guy. It's, it's hard to find out if he has a heartbeat. But when it's time to go, man, he can really be intense. Yeah, and Tom's been doing this for a long time, so this isn't the first time he's ever set up a boat and sent the driver out to go win. Tommy Thompson off the pace, trying to limit to the finish. Meanwhile, Jimmy Shane coming to turn two for the final time. Really flying that boat. Somebody forgot to tell him the water's rough, Bill, because you're right. He is flying this thing. First year in the boat full time. Checkered flag waiting. He's not going to slow up at all. 27-year-old Jimmy Shane in the ground trucking for crew chief Tom Anderson on the front stretch. Takes the checkered flag and wins the world championship in Doha, Qatar. What a season for that kid, and Mike, you called it back in Madison. You know, he's a good driver, he always has been, but now he's got some good equipment underneath him, and it's starting to show. And he's adding to his resume. Second place finish for Steve David in the old boy Alberto, and you know it's mixed emotions for that guy. He won the driving championship and the team championship, but he really wanted to win the world championship. Final heat results, 400 points for Jimmy Shane. Those are 400 big points because in the season-long picture, it moves Shane into second place in the championship standings, leapfrogging Dave Vilwak behind Steve Davis. Now down to Steve Montgomery and the world champion. The second win of Jimmy Shane's first full year driving an unlimited hydroplane. This was a big one. How does it feel? Oh, just amazing, you know, just unbelievable. The, the crew's all fired up. I'm all fired up. So really exciting, uh, really exciting to be here in Qatar to be racing for the Orcs Cup, the World Championship, and uh, go out there and win it. Can't do any more than that. So I know in the not-too-distant future you're going to become a father for the first time, but I'm thinking until then this is going to be one of the bigger thrills of your life. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm really excited about uh, what's coming in the future, but right now this is, uh, I couldn't ask for anything more. Mike, been a fantastic season. How about these young guys? Yeah, the young guys are here to make their mark. Last year it was Scott Ledicoat. This year, Jimmy Shane. Dave Vilwak won the Gold Cup, but man, they struggled. No, they were plagued with incidents all year long. In 2013, Steve David has the number one and two goals. He just wants to win the Detroit Gold Cup, and he also wants to win the Orange Cup. Be sure to follow H1 on Facebook and Twitter. For Mike Allen, Steve Montgomery, and everybody around the course and on the crew, I'm Bill Weber. Thanks for having us in for the race, and congratulations to Jimmy Shane.